Question now is at part two, stand part. This is debate on clauses seven to 20 and the schedule. The Honourable uh, Ruth Dyson. Um, Mr Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to speak on part two of the Identity Information Confirmation Bill. Um, as you correctly pointed out, it starts at clause seven and goes through to 20. Um, Mr Speaker, I just want to begin by expressing a little bit of disappointment in the response that the Minister and the Chair gave to my colleague Trevor Mallard when he described the significant amount of change that was necessary to make this bill suitable for bringing back to the House. I was going to take a call in part one, but we suddenly seem to have been voting. But I will just briefly refer to the fact that a critical part of part one needed amendment, and that was the definition of an agency. So, so a, a big part of this bill is um, ensuring that agencies are able to confirm identity, but the very definition of agency needed to be changed by the Select Committee because in the bill that the Minister introduced it didn't include an intermediary and that was an obvious problem that the Select Committee alerted um, the officials to and the officials quite properly drew up a very impressive revised um, definitions of both agency and then a new definition for intermediary which again is described in part one. So two critical parts of making this bill work right, the definition of an agency, you know, a sort of 101 of how this bill is going to work, needed to be corrected before the bill could come back to the House. But in part two, the part that we were up to now, of course we now have to look at the insertions um, consistently throughout part two of an intermediary, which was omitted in the Minister's first attempt at the bill. But then we have quite substantial other amendments as well throughout this part, um, including the exceptions which are outlined on page 8. So again, um, substantial deletions and rewriting by the committee. And then we get to page 9, uh, clause 11, where the entire section, which is you know, a page and a half, is deleted and replaced with appropriate wording. But this, which actually goes for, um, if I could just count, one, two, three, um, nearly four full pages of revised text. Now, uh, Mr. Mr Chairman, we're only talking about a bill that is 18 pages long. It only goes to clause 20 and then onto the schedules. This is not a big bill, and yet five pages are total rewrites in this bill. So that's like, like over a quarter of the bill was rewritten. So when my colleague Trevor Mallard referred to this you know, pretty, pretty flawed, not great attempt at a bill that the Minister and the Chair, the Honourable Nathan Guy, had introduced, the Minister poo-pooed it. He brushed him off. He dismissed his concerns, um, basically calling himself a pretty good minister and saying that he'd done a jolly fine job. Well, the evidence is before the committee as we speak, uh, Mr Chair, and I'm very pleased that the Select Committee and the officials did such a lot of work to make not a great bill, but one um, where the intention was clearly supported by Labour, into something that was fit to be returned to the House. Um, obviously, Clause 13 is another area that has had a complete rewrite, and those are um, in relation to requirements of the Privacy Commissioner. If you're talking about people having confidence in a system where an agency is able to use that service to confirm identity information that's been provided to them, then having a clear definition of an agency is pretty fundamental. There cannot be anything more fundamental than that. And then if you're talking about relationships and responsibilities, I would have thought, and I think that most members in the House would think, that the requirements for consultation with the Privacy Commissioner would be another fundamental, and this is the second part of the Bill, that has had to be substantially rewritten. So why do we think these issues are important, um, Mr Chairman? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the House um, why, from my perspective, we think they're important. It's because so many things have been going wrong 
with our departmental uh, systems. Uh, and Mr Chairman, I thought you were going to just push the buzzer there and I was just anticipating <laughs> Mr Chairman. Honourable Ruth Dyche. That was a taunting little act, <laughs> Mr Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Done in the, in the best humour, I know, and, and actually in the, on the grounds of accuracy, I'm sure. Um, some are systems that are in-house, like the shambles that we have seen um, at the kiosks and at work and income, where you know, a, a regular punter went in, didn't hack into the system, just used it as it was intended, and the next minute was provided with copious amounts of information uh, which nobody wanted him to have. Work and income had been alerted to the security concern and didn't, for some reason, didn't seem to think that it was appropriate to tell their minister. Maybe their minister wouldn't have been interested in such a potential security breach. Uh, but in my view, that's the sort of activity that this House should be extremely concerned about, not just because it wasn't hacking it was just using the system as intended, but because it exposed some of the most vulnerable members of our community to potential abuse, there was a breach of their privacy. Fortunately, the person who breached the um, security, quite legitimately as I understand it, didn't use that information for any um, purpose that could have done any harm. Thank goodness for that. What if it had been someone who had malicious intent and knew how to operate the kiosk. The kiosk was set up so that we can income clients, people who uh, are receiving a benefit or people who are going there for information and support, can look up things like information about jobs. It was never intended to pass over information about children in foster care, their medication, their personal addresses where they're living, other information which potentially is very damaging. Mr Chairman, we've also had some discussion about the total shambles that Hikia Parata has, um, in, in a you know, pretty intelligent move actually, <laughs> pushed on entirely to her Associate Minister, the Honourable Craig Foss. I guess the temptation to pass on this sort of shambles to your Associate is pretty strong, especially when you're in such a lot of difficulty. In uh, my hometown of Christchurch, where the Minister came into town and said she was going to close and merge a lot of our schools and now people are wondering what on earth that's all about because there's no logic to it. There's no intention to have better out educational outcomes. It's all a bit of a frustration and stress inducer actually. But what the Minister Hikia Parata has pushed on to her Associate Minister is responsibility for Nova Pay. First of all, the problems with Nova Pay were pretty straightforward, immensely frustrating for teachers. Some of them just didn't get paid. Then we found out that some of them had got paid even though they'd left teaching some time ago. Well, you know, pleasant though it might be to get a big dollop of money in your bank account when you're not working for the person who's paid you that money, you've also got to pay it back. You feel pretty uncomfortable that you've taken something that doesn't belong to you and it's an additional hassle and stress for people who don't frankly need it. But now we've found out that it's not just teachers not getting paid or people who are no longer teachers getting paid, but we've found out that some schools are getting access to information, private details about teachers who are not at their school. I noticed the um, Associate Minister's comments about that. He said that every issue was being taken seriously. Well, well, that's jolly fine, but actually what we'd like is the system fixed so we didn't have this ongoing problem for teachers who are now going through their exam period thinking about the Christmas break and not knowing at all what their financial situation is going to be because of this totally incompetent pay system. So having the Associate Minister saying, oh, we're taking all these issues seriously, doesn't actually cut the mustard, frankly. It's not good enough. It's like the quality of this bill when it was first introduced. Uh, the Marshall Lang Primary School Associate Principal said that it would, would have been easy under the current Novapay system to divert money from a teacher's bank account through the breach in the system. How do teachers around the country feel about that? I don't think they'd be very satisfied with it at all. This is just the latest 
in a series of very important and serious breaches where people's individual privacy has been threatened, where people have been sent the wrong information by government departments. And I don't think, frankly, that the government is getting on top of this at all. Mr Chair. Oh, Jan Logie. Mr Chair, I rise to speak to part two of this bill and firstly to say that the Green Party...